Hey guys, welcome to the Bridgeside Network. I'm Mr. Bridgeside, and this channel is all about supporting creators, building community, and giving you the production techniques and skills to help you start rolling. So on this Monday live stream, I do this at 7 p.m. on Mondays, give you some creative and tech advice. Uh, let me know what you want to see on Mondays. We'll do that. But for this one, I figured I'd show you how to do how we use our live stream technology, the gear we use to live switch. If you don't have any type of idea of broadcast and how broadcast works, we're gonna get through some of that today. Basic, we're gonna give some basic concept. If you're a professional, you're gonna learn nothing here today. This is basic concept. Maybe you'll learn more about the gear if you've never seen the Black Magic gear before. But we're gonna show you our stuff, just really quick. This is the, uh, the Black Magic um, broadcast panel 1ME the advanced broadcast panel and on this switcher hive mind radio what's up whoop whoop so this is not a switcher people see this and think this is a switcher this is just a controller the real switcher is this guy this is the the brains this is the the one rack unit thing <laughs> one rack unit uh, hardware that's in the studio which is in my garage and this is the brains. You plug your cameras into this. You plug all your sources into it. And but this guy, again, I'm cutting to it as you see. This guy is the controller. All it has in it is an Ethernet cable and power. All right. So let's start from the beginning, the concept of switching, broadcast switching. You have sources. You go live with program. You set up what's going live in preview. Here's a diagram right here. I'll give you full screen here so you really get it. Oh. So, so I'm, I'm actually using Wirecast to complement the, the Black, Black Magic, Magic gear. gear. So, so right, right here, here this, this is, is a basic structure, structure for how you switch. switch. This, this is an eight sources. sources. Now, now there's, there's different switchers, switchers that have tons of sources, like live sports, you can have 16 cameras, if not more. So preview means what's about to go live, and program means what is live. So you, if you go back to uh, the panel a second, so preview is what's about to go live, program is what is live. In general switchers, your preview is always represented by green. Live when you're program, red means you're live. So if you're in red, you better be putting out live what you want to be putting out live. Audio is doubling. That's a terrible thing. It's the one, one downside of not having a, an audio person for these live streams. Is that any better? Hive mind? I think I know the culprit. No, I don't. I have mind. All right, I'm back here. All right. So, so an example here. If I, I'm going to dissolve. See, in the bottom left box here, where you see me right now, that's I have routed to Wirecast. I have that preview is routed to that bottom left box. I don't know what it was, man, but uh, it's fixed when you transition back. Oh, okay. All right, I won't go to that then. So this is a live stream, guys. <laughs> Anything can happen. All right, so in the bottom left box, is my, I have routed to that little box preview. And what you see in this this larger box in the, is program. So as you see, I'm using this T-bar here to switch what's back and forth. Now, Blackmagic is, is a great company for, I don't want to say budget production gear, but it's, they have a really good price point now with the advent of software and technology and using every using a Mac to do anything. Uh, back in the day, hundreds of thousands of dollars it would take to do what we're doing right here. And this is not that it's cheap, but it's nominal compared to what it used to be. All right, so 
right now the switcher is in program and I, wa I want to show you this you don't need we never ha we didn't always have this here we used to have we used to just use software and here at, at the Birdside Network we we have a bunch of creative shows we do a music show a live music show on Tuesdays called Birdside Live we have original artists here and we didn't have this until last year so we did four seasons without or three seasons without this and so we use software so I have I have my another computer routed here I want to show you this is this what the software looks like so if I click around it gives you the same visual representation that the hardware does so we used to be able to do that without the hardware so if I click auto here boom it does the cutting and as you see in the bottom left every time I I dissolve it puts what transfers from program to preview boom and that's just using the software or you can hard click you just on the top the top here this is the preview bus in red I mean the program bus Whoop. and see I changed it now I can't see it but you can just hard click it and it changes what's what's in program what's in preview sorry what's in program and you could do preview here too boom so I'm changing you see a change in the bottom left because I'm changing what's in preview now this is just the way I have it set up for the stream generally people won't see what's in your preview but I use preview as a source and as you see in this switcher you can have eight sources at a time and sources can be whatever you want anything that displays an image a source can be a camera a source can be um, Apple TV a source can be PlayStation a source can be anything that you take a, an HDMI or a video cable out is your source and you can route that to that hey Nat what's up how are you Hey, Melissa. Gear tour, yo. Where are all my gearheads at? Guys, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just doing some basic stuff here, but I just want to show you how Black Magic works. And if I go back here, I'm going to dissolve back to this. Within this menu, you can do a lot of things. Um, if I go to full screen here. Ah, I found the issue, Mr. Hive Mind. Okay. Hope we got more comments. Can you save multiple source profiles? What do you mean by that exactly? You can save how your switcher is laid out. You can save um, your layouts. You could save the look, but the source really comes down to what you, whatever you have wired in, at least for this black magic. I'm good, Natalie. I'm doing fantastic. Glad to have you back. All right, so I'm going to go full screen with this guy. Oh, you know what? I'm going to route something using another black magic device. I, I'm integrating a black magic router with this black magic switcher. So, wirecast top. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, you can you can just save how yeah how how your all the switcher settings, like because there's a lot of advanced stuff you can do within the switcher with upstream keys, and I'm not going to get into that because that's going way beyond basics, but um, that could be another time we can go through that stuff. But, um, okay. Um, boom. There we go. All right, guys, I'm going to take this full screen. So as you see here, this is the switcher menu right here. But at the bottom, it can toggle between four menus. So right now I have two images in there in the media pool here. I can drag images into here. 
and as you see on the right there's media player one and media player two you can have two different pools of media to cut to in in the hard switcher uh, you can well I'll show you back here there's a representation for MP1 and MP2 that's media player so you can dissolve back and forth and program and preview between two different pictures or media sources so right now I just have those graphics of the products uh, the graphic of the product and the layout of a general broadcast switcher and if you click over here to the next one look this is the audio menu you can use the software to control levels. I'm going to control my mic level. I'm going to talk one, two, three, four, five. So you couldn't hear me there. I kept talking, but I can control the audio that's coming in from camera one, it says at the top. But you can also, when we do our music show, we have the XLR feed coming in from our soundboard. So we have XLR going into that hardware switcher and we can raise the XLR level and integrate directly from audio from every source if we wanted. When we do the show, we keep it simple. Everything just comes from the XLR source, all our microphones. But you have that option to mix and match your sources and a soundboard, so you have some versatility. And then there, this, this fourth menu here, I actually haven't gotten to use this too much. I know how it works, but uh, we don't have any Blackmagic cameras yet but you can literally control your cameras, your Blackmagic cameras, colors and focus and, and different options with this menu. It's like in a traditional broadcast environment, you would have units called CCUs, camera control units, that can control each camera and you have a, a video engineer or a shader uh, control each camera. But that's our setup here. I'm going to bring it back to the the show box and uh, all right guys let me know if you have any questions and again welcome to the stream just wanted to give you a quick tutorial and demo of how we do things here so the beautiful thing about using this panel and I'll put this back the beautiful thing about this is when using the software as you saw the software you're using a mouse to cycle around and you see the digital toolbar if you see right there you see that digital toolbar uh, I'm sorry um, t-bar and it's not the same as physically touching it like I'm clicking and dragging and it works but especially when you're doing something like a music show this becomes an instrument so I'm feeling it out to the timing of the music and you're following the fade and you, if it's a slow song, you can go real slow, and it's all manual. And you could also go back into the, um, whoop, you're seeing picture within picture within picture. If, uh, you can go back into the software and set the, the, uh, the amount of the fade, which also can affect what you see here. We can set the timing in the panel, say I want it to be two seconds fade, or one second, or 12 frames. I'll quickly show an example of that. Um, okay, mix rate, transitions. I'm going to set this to four seconds. I don't know, I'll dial it in. And now I can just press the auto button. It's going to take four seconds to get back to me. There you go, four seconds. And now if I press auto again, it's four seconds to go back. What was the most challenging part about setting up and routing all the switchers? All of it, Natalie says. Uh, the most challenging thing was figuring out what cameras we're going to integrate. When you're taking different brand product and making it t speak to each, you say speak in tech talk, uh, you need these, these different equipments from different brands to speak to each other and communicate. And that's the most challenging thing when you don't have all the same brand. That's why Black Magic is actually really cool because they make everything that integrates. Now there's drawbacks be between other options you can get from other companies and you mix and match the things you need. You know, every camera is great nowadays. It's, but everyone serves a different purpose and you have to decide what content you want to produce before you go ahead and pull the trigger on something. What is going to fit your needs best more than what's the best price or 
or what looks nice or integrates well, if it's ultimately going to be more useful to you down the line, whether it be creatively or monetarily for, for work, then you go with that. What, what fits your workflow the best? I'm using Panasonic cameras, which have done me well so far. I've used GH4 cameras, which are DSLRs, but with a, with a base that converts to SDI cable, which is twist lock professional video cable. But you know what? The workaround for that was that they had a video delay. That conversion to SDI adds a video delay, and it's been a stress for years now. So we have to delay our soundboard to match that delay, which then puts cameras that are natively SDI out of sync, in which we have to use a separate device to delay the video to match the delayed audio. That's Now we're getting real technical here. Is it possible to automate each camera cut, say every four seconds you want to switch cameras on its own, for instance, would that ever be an option you would want? You want to automate each camera cut, say four, so to automate going from camera two, then four seconds going, you can write scripts and software for sure. Oh, you can actually, absolutely you can do that. You can, within this menu here, you have a macro menu. If you go to macros up here, it brings up this other menu. I have no idea. This is from all other sh shows we haven't done in a little while. But you can set many different things to happen at once and then make it have a hotkey. Boom. So if you, you can set it to one second showing a lower third and then be out. And then the lower third comes out and then it cuts to something else. You can set that up with the click of one button. But you literally have to go into your macro menu up here. Um, if I could see it. And then you, you can record. There's a record button right here if you see. You can record your actions of your computer. And it's taking all the information. Uh, and you can save it. And then this one button can cycle in all those actions with the one click. So that's how that would be done using macros. And if you see the 1ME for this product, the MEs are, are mix effects. And there says four here, but we have one working with the the hardware switcher we have in there and if I take the macro menu off this sub menu if I want to put a picture in picture box which I'm not going to do right now I can control what which source goes into there what cameras one through seven um, so it's pretty cool you have a lot of versatility with this at your fingertips you could use the software but this just makes things so much easier yeah man the macro menu is super cool uh, as you see, our Brooklyn Versus show we do here, this live debate show, we have a lot of graphics flying in and different stuff to cut through, topic boxes. And instead of dragging stuff in, um, instead of dragging stuff in through this menu over here and dra dragging and dropping, we can preset which graphic goes into which place here so that it knows, I'll deny that for now. So we can, we can literally preset which graphic goes where and when with these hotkeys, which makes it so much more awesome so yeah um, what else is good about this I really I really do like the way black magic works you know I think uh, back in the day it got a lot of you know when you're adjusting to a new generation of product and companies and gear you know old timers or old school thinking uh, people weren't jumping on the bandwagon because they had a lot of kinks to work out but it's been super solid for me we're on our fifth year of shows now, and I've used a lot of, I've used TriCasters, I've used massive switchers in big studios, and this hasn't really failed on me ever. It really depends on your network connection, and not, not, not Wi-Fi, but everything is networked through Ethernet within, within my, my network at home. So if you ever had a problem dropping out of your router, then that's a problem, but you can't blame that on Blackmagic. So they've made some pretty stable gear that, for me at least. Um, there's something else I wanted to show you. We've went through the menus here. Um, and, uh, I don't know. Any more questions while I, I f figure this out? We went through audio. We went through media. We went through camera control. No, I think that I think the macro. I think your question was what I what I wanted to bring up. How did you get that specific controller? How did getting that specific controller elevate what you were already doing? What are some of the drawbacks? Oh, these questions are great because it's bringing up exactly what I wanted to talk about again. 
Um, so the question is how to getting that specific controller elevate what you were already doing. What are some of the drawbacks of it and how would you improve it? Um, I'll start with the drawbacks, the negative. So we're here right now. Maybe I'll go full screen for this um, so you can just see. Um, all right, camera two. All right, I'm going to just all full screen this. And this is beautiful. The negative side of it is you have all these beautiful buttons. And look, if I don't know if you can see this, but there's an audio menu button somewhere over here. Where is audio? This is audio right here. I click on it. Look, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. They, they set out to make this an audio control menu, and they just decided maybe this is not in production anymore. I'm not sure. But um, that audio button doesn't do anything. I would love to be able to have audio control press that and just lower my level from here and not have to go to software. Since I paid for this, I, I have another computer right next to me here, but if I could just click on that audio and be able to just tweak the level, that's one drawback for me. And I believe there's another thing that they never got to. I never got to use this yet. Well, I, I got to use it a little bit, but not for... Well, you can. I'll show you the picture in picture for a second. Um, nope. All right, I don't picture in picture, so I don't want to do this now. But this can control a PTZ camera, like a remote camera. So you can twist it to zoom in and out. You can move it around and it can control. It can also control your DVE box, like your picture in picture box. So I, if I just push it left, it can move that box on the screen a little over and zoom it in, zoom it out to make it bigger and smaller. Um, so the drawback would just be, I mean, it's not cheap, and it was a, a stupid purchase at the moment because it, I didn't need it, but it made the creative process so much better. Like I said before, being able to just just go back and forth, you know, uh, and treat this like an instrument just changed everything. And the phys and it's also easier for. I'll I'll bring it back to me. It's also easier, especially in our environment. We're teaching a lot of people. We're teaching a lot of people how to do this. You know, we have, we have students and people just learning different parts of production. They can come in and physically just see the visual representation of, of the show and know that, okay, the red button's live. You're live when that red button is hit. So if I'm cutting through, you know you're live. When you see that red, that fearful red light. So it's just easier to, to just jump right in. And I know a lot of churches and houses of worship use this kind of technology and, and, and do their productions and, and even like events, corporate events, and maybe some things where you get volunteers where you could, it's pretty idiot-proof in a sense where you can come in and sit down and teach someone how to just cut simple cameras in two minutes. So hopefully you learned how to do that on this video. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's changed the game. And I'll give you a little taste of our music. The other cool thing one last cool thing about this is that over here on this computer here, um, we have our playback option. I have a computer here dedicated to playing out video. And this computer has this program called On The Air Video. And it integrates directly with Blackmagic via the network connection. So the cool thing about the Blackmagic is that they're, they're very networkable with newer technology and newer programs. So... This uh, on-the-air video software recognizes Blackmagic Switcher as, as an option to cut. So I have a button right here, and I have a button right here that will, once I click it, it says playback, PB, playback computer. If I go take it into program, it'll play out video right away, which is a beautiful thing. And, and I'll just play it. First of all, this is a very beautiful song by one of our artists, Feather and Stone here. But uh, okay, I have my playback audio up in the audio menu from the Black Magic, and I'm gonna just on the three count. I'm gonna cut the program here, and you'll see the video trigger right when I press it. Three, two, one, cut into playback. Oh, and I pressed the. I just pressed the wrong button. All right, three, two, one. There we go. Go right side. Bat fingers. That one. Feather and stone.
Lay around on Sunday. Watch the cars drive by. Waiting on the phone. Yeah, it makes things easy when you're doing a live show and you're, you're working and late cameras again. And then, all right, get ready to play back. You, you can't want to cut to stop that, by. That video source. You don't so have to I'll be here, here alone. You can just, I want you, you to call me. It makes the one minute. When the sun goes sense. down. So you can click that video. Yeah, you like that, right? Three, and two, talk one. Me oh, to oh. Sleep. I pressed the roll. I pressed me. And since I can't hold your hand while I'm lying. Oh, and another. I want beautiful. your voice like next to song. me. See, and the music is going to still go because I have it set to when you cut away from it, then the music still plays. That's an option. So now I'm the music's still playing. You're still kitchen. hearing it. It's in the preview bus Noodles now. So I in the preview pan. route to this, this stream window. But you say not and to. And you can wait. mix the audio and the software. And I'm glad you brought that up, Hive Mike. This is a controller. You won't be home till morning. Too. Your boss, he can't come in. It, it can, uh, but I'll Once save you a play if you control. just promise to call me. Raise my audio. When the and sun you, goes you down. Channel from if you want the hard physical hardware. And talk so me to lower, sleep. Lower the music. And, since I and I did that through this controller. Maybe I'll cut to this camera. So, so yeah. And I channel eight is set up the playback, and I raise it. Oh, darling, I've been walking in my sleep. I just need something to hold on to. Someone that I can keep around. I'm breaking see down. Lower. You see the fader go down. I'll switch it so. So I'm controlling it here, and I'm going to go up with it. And you see the sun goes eight, down. Playback go up. And talk me to sleep. Hard mute button. And since I can't hard mute. And that was all triggered from this USB controller. And you can do this in the software. You can click and drag, but it's just nice to do that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I do prefer the physical stuff sometimes, especially if you're dealing with multiple computers. It's nice to know exactly what works with something else. Uh, you know, it's nice to know what you're dealing with. Uh, thanks for all, thanks for all the comments, guys. I'm gonna bring that back to me. Uh, that that's a pretty much basic overview of how we control shows here using the Black Magic ATEM switcher and controller, the broadcast panel. Um, uh, thank you guys for the comments. And with that, I would say, uh, if you guys need any more tips and tricks and and advice, um, I literally just had someone email me that saw one of our videos we did a couple Mondays ago. You know, we did a live stream with Jules Jensen and someone was is doing Zoom conferencing for their company in Florida, some pharma company, I believe, and they had some Zoom questions. And in our YouTube, it says, if you have any questions, email us at info at gobritside.com. And someone just did that 10 minutes before the show. And I got on the phone with somebody. So if you need any help, uh, feel free to email us at info at gobritside.com. And we're all about helping you get out there and start rolling and, uh, we're doing the same thing. We have a whole bunch of content here that's an example of the production prowess our team puts in, the hard work we put into this, and, and you can watch our content. We hope you enjoy that too. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Natalie and Hive Mind and everybody on the stream. Uh, appreciate it, and we'll be back next Monday. Let me know what you, uh, we should talk about and what, what's grinding your gears technically or creatively, and we'll see you on the Brit side.